What's up, gang? It's your pal Brady from Monkey Edge here. I am somewhere in Southern California at a nondescript, unmarked door. Uh, with my buddy Jade from Starline Gear here, we're going to kind of give you a Monkey Edge TV slash Cribs view of uh, behind the scenes of the S Gear operation. So, right. buddy Jade, I think that guy's yelling at us. So, uh, I'm going to let uh, Jade walk you and talk you through here. We'll kind of ask some questions and go over some stuff. All right, come on in. We'll check it out. Oh, oh, hey now. This is uh, this is where the magic happens, huh? Some of the magic. Yeah, some of the magic. Um, I'll give you a basic rundown of it. We're, most of you guys know we're a real small shop. Um, and most of us, actually all of us involved are bachelors. So we're not the cleanest people. Uh, so it's a little a little scattered, but we make it work. Yeah, and I mean, that, that bathroom's like a crime scene. But I mean, The bathroom's we'll, we'll, bad. Yeah. It's never had a... This, I don't know if it's ever been cleaned. Not a woman's touch. So. No. Yeah, I just want to quick, Jade mentioned it, I just want to throw like maybe some commentary. A lot of guys think, you know, the Starlink is some Fortune 500 company with, a, you know, a team of 100, 100 guys rapidly churning out goodies, but it's, it's really a small, craftsman-oriented business that is uh, really, literally, as you're going to see here as we go through here, these things are, are handmade. Uh, by people that, that care about what they're doing. So uh, we'll get Jade to take you away here and give me some insight. Yeah, dope. let's, um, in fact, let's start with uh, where, where it all starts with chemo uh, at the wax pot. And so he's just wrapping up, shooting a, a few uh, few different pieces that, we're, we're, that are gonna be new, especially for this new show coming up. Uh, what are you pulling out, chemo? Zombie. The zoo zombie beat that one's that's never even been seen before yet so that's the collab knife coming up here then that's going to be the bead for uh for one of the g3 collab knives yeah it's uh still it, we don't even have that in production yet that's these are the first waxes that we're pulling out of the mold uh that chemo's shooting he's been working on uh uh what else is in here so this is a wax for the king bead all Vegas. Now that is limited to just G3. This right? is limited just to that to the Vegas show G3. That's it. We're not going to produce them otherwise. We're not going to produce them after the show. What we make for the show is going to be what we have, and that's and, and, it. And since we're here, why don't I mean, uh, other than saying chemo making wax, like chemo, why don't you uh, maybe give introduce yourself and yeah, uh, chemo. Uh, I shoot wax here. <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. No. Um, that's the starts with the mold. Uh, well, actually, starts here with the order that comes in. So, Jade will write it down, just what needs to be shot here. Then we'll go to the uh, mold drawer over here, pull out the molds that we need to be shot. So these are rings, and uh, you can see how many we have in there. They're perfectly organized. Um, and I'll pull out what I need, a bunch of them, line them all up here, stack them, and then. Basically, they get powdered real quick. Oh, the powder. Like that. And then this is the injector. Which so is you're applying the pressure there to keep the halves there? Yeah, okay. so if you, if you see that, it shoots it out like that. And, and that's no good, it's just my impression. Right? Yeah, yeah. it needs to go into something. Right. So, I shoot the, uh, for a couple of seconds till I, I'm sure it's full. And then that's it. And then it just goes off to the side and waits to dry. And I go on to the next one. And I just shoot whatever. Well, chemo's, chemo's, let me just step in. I, I gave you a chance, but you blew it. No yeah. offense. Uh, oh, yeah. don't, don't let me just step it. in here. But chemo is also the guy that, that shoots all the pictures, the catalog pictures, or the majority of the catalog stuff for Starling Gear. And, and I'm sure you've seen his work in the, in the Starling Gear books, the photo. Um, Compilation books and, and uh, pictorial documentaries. Pictorial documentaries of the the Starline Gear Venture, um, and he also taught me a ton and has been totally gracious and in, 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 uh, sharing that stuff with me. So big shout out to him and whatever. So he does more than just shooting wax. Pretty modest too. So. Yeah, Chemo is definitely definitely responsible for for helping to to document and establish the the, the image for our company. Uh, the pictures that he takes and, and the way he lays them out and all that is. And he's also got a few of the bead designs. I'm sure you, you start like your guys. Do. Yeah. You yeah. He's got uh, some of his stuff designs too, in the, in the beads and then other stuff in the pendants and the rings. Too. Yeah. Yeah. He's got his own cool line of, of doing stuff. Um, so after after it, chemo does the wax, he'll clean it. Uh, we'll show that later. 
and then it'll go to Rick for stamping. We'll show that in a little bit. And then after it gets cast, it comes back here. And then I'll deal with it like, so here's a batch of, well here, here's a perfect example. That There's that king bead in silver, not polished yet, but uh, in, the, in the various, these are all in various stages of finishing. So these have been, uh, antiqued and tumbled for the first phase and then I, I'm gonna see where all the imperfections are so I don't know if you can see that little BB sticking out back there behind the temple that little parting line right there uh, that's about it on that one so will, will that then get um, so I'll cl clean that yeah up I'll clean it end. I'll clean it on the bench um, with the with the different tools and right. then, it'll, then it'll be uh, polished and, and, and real quick you just glossed over it um, but when you talked about why don't you talk about the stamp and, and Rick stamping and what that yeah why well, we'll and, show and, and all that stuff this is a real important element for for how we do stuff even something as simple as just a just a bead it's not even a big you know six hundred dollar ring or, or big expensive bracelet or anything but every one of our items that gets stamped like this has three stamps on it it'll have the logo stamp It'll have a sterling stamp if it's sterling, or if it's bronze, it won't, it won't have the, the metal stamp, obviously. And then it'll have the copyright stamp. So all of our items get hand stamped by Rick in the wax form. So after chemo's done cleaning them, then they go to Rick and he stamps them before they go to casting. So they're all stamped in the wax. They don't come out of the mold that way. Um, so that way it's always a crisp, clear stamping. That's important because lately there have been a lot of counterfeits coming out those stamps are muddled, they're not sharp, they're, they're misstamped, or they're missing some of the stamps. So those are some ways to check to see uh, the authenticity. And also, I just, let me jump in here and point this out. Um, grab a couple of these Elvis beads. And again, because they are all hand stamped. The king bead? Excuse me, the king bead. The king bead. Graceland, uh, uh, hold back your lawyers. <laughs> Uh, these are all uh, these are all individually stamped. So if you see, you know, if, if somebody has three, two, three, four beads, and you see that these stamps are all in the exact same position and look the exact same, uh, odds are you might be looking at uh, what do they call them in Donnie Brasco? Fugazis. Fugazis. So here's an example right. of that right here. There, two Spartan beads, and if you look, there's a sterling stamp and the copyright, and on this one there's the copyright and the sterling. So you can so. clearly tell they don't come out of the mold that way. Even though they're on the same side and they kind of look the same, there's there's some subtle differences there where you can look for that. Cool. So so after after casting, after some finishing, uh, I'll inspect them, detail them, whatever, and then they'll go into polishing phases. I'll show you the polishing room in a sec. Um, for things like bracelets, if we're gonna do a, let's see if I got a bracelet in here that's put together that's not. So yeah, that's some raw, raw monkey links down. Yeah, there's some raw monkey links. So here's some. And, and just the monkeys, uh, you know, just out of all the Starling gear pieces, you know, I got I to say it. Just happened to be mine. there. So the monkey link and the monkey uh, pendant. So these are out of casting. That's why they're real tall. Haven't even gone through the antique process yet. Um, but they survived casting process and I've clipped the links and getting them ready to see uh, So they actually come out as one solid loop and then you clip them right and then okay. I clip them I clip them by hand uh, That way it, we leave it solid that way it, it flows better when it casts right we don't leave a, a cut there um, So I'll take a bunch of links. Let's say I'll take These links and these links Go over to the assembly zone, which is this little section right there build the bracelet or wallet chain or whatever. Go to the soldering bench here. It's got uh, torch, uh, ceramic plate set up, flux, solder, um, acid pickle. So we'll solder it up, dip it in the acid pickle, and then it goes back into the, uh, into the loud, dirty, noisy room where all the uh, polishing media is set up. Check, you wanna check that out? Yeah. It's, it's, Let's check it out. Actually, you know, since this is cribs, though, I'd like to. What do you What do you have in your fridge here, Starling? Uh we got. You know, we got the basics in our fridge. Again, bachelors, so we don't necessarily get all of the uh, the, the food groups. But I think we got the basics. We've got um, Rockview whipping cream, which is the best quality whipping cream you can get. A couple of ketchup packets, because you just never know when you need a condiment. 
Condiment. Some more condiment. Con condiment. Condiment. And you got some dark chocolate there. Dark right? chocolate. And some soda. Really good Perfect. soda. And and uh, I, I really like Honest Tea. It doesn't have a lot of sugar in it. I'm not a big soda guy, but if you're going to drink soda, you might as well drink the good stuff, the microbrew stuff. Some like hip, hippie tea there or something. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, some hippie tea, or USD organic, and, and all that good stuff. Wait and, a minute. Wait a minute. Is there... <laughs> Jade would Jade would never drink that's this poison. Jade that's would never not, drink this poison. I don't know how poison. that got in there, but uh, I don't know where that came from. It's awesome. But All righty, take a okay. look at the, uh, the polishing. Now. Check out the dirt. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is kind of the final stage. Um, you want to? Yeah. Let me, hey, this that is, this is what our polisher is going right now. I'll, I'll show it off so you can hear what I'm saying. But it's. Uh, so vibrating tumblers with a, um, a soap and water mixture feed in there, and I've got what do I have? This is our mid, this is our middle phase. So this is a wallet chain here, and I think I have a bracelet in here. Put together. Don't worry, we have a magnet for that. We had a silver magnet too, but we lost it, so we have to. Aren't those rare? They're pretty rare. Yeah, silver magnets are pretty rare. So this is. Uh, took a bunch of links out of the drawer, hammered them together, soldered all the joints, put the skull links on there, and then, uh, so this bracelet's now going through the phases of polishing. So it's looking a little bit shinier, a little bit more like I should, but it's still got some imperfections on there, some PBs and stuff that I'll have to clean up, party lines and stuff like that, and the soldering lines I'll, I'll uh, sand down. Uh, and Chemo helps me a lot with that stuff, he does a, helps me out with that one. And this is a... A good friend of ours, Wallet Chain, that we're building. Um, the best guy. Yeah, yeah, good guy. One of the good guys. One of the good guys. So this Wallet Chain is going to go out to him as soon as I finish. But see, you can see where I've got to... If, I don't even think i finished soldering this one yet. I've still got to solder every single one of those joints after I hammered them together. So there's... It's a little bit time consuming, especially when, when he wants a big long wall chain like that. Not my favorite thing to make, but... But uh, it is, and you're also a big fan of soldering helmets on monkeys, right? I, I'm well, that I enjoy. How can you not enjoy <laughs> soldering right. things on heads? Uh, so, tumbling phases that was in the medium phase. Our first phase there is a plastic media. That's so the just like, like is this a ceramic or just a straight it's like plastic. a plastic, huh? Yeah, and it's uh, and this is the first that's the first phase. Oh, okay. So, that's the co more coarse one. And then those king beads that I showed you that, that were antique but just barely tumbled right. had just come out of there. Okay. So that's so that's that what it looks mat. like. Right. And then once it comes out of the second phase, it starts to look more shiny. I do a final detail, make sure there's no more imperfections and everything is, is, is uh, passing quality control. And then we go on to the final phase. Super fine. And these are both stainless steel media, which is nice. They don't rust up on us. And no shop would be complete without a standy or a sturdy, handy, cuts everything, grinds everything, uh, belt grinder. So what gets what gets ground? Uh, everything from links that if they like, actually I ground all these links before that on the cut joint. For some reason, every now and then they'll get a big lip in there. Oh, okay. So I'll open that link up, hit it, hook it inside there, and sand that yeah. in real quick. Yeah. yeah um, Everything that really needs to be flat, so a lot of stuff that we solder onto things needs to have a really good flat back, so I'll hit them on there. Cool. Uh, a lot of the skull links, when I cut them, I'll uh, final sand in there and get a nice and flat joint. That way, when I hammer them together, they uh, marry up for a little while and get a nice, a nice clean seam. Uh, so that one gets used quite a bit. So this, well, hey, I appreciate you letting us come by and get kind of an inside look at what's going on. And, uh, yeah, man. Given Given the the Monkey Edge TV viewers, the the mighty YouTube internet world, kind of a view behind the scenes of what it takes to go into that stuff that we that we all dig and wear, and sometimes it's kind of good, kind of a how it's made. It's kind of a cool thing to to see what's put into it and and why it is what it is. So, uh, it's Brady here with my buddy Jade in the dark recessed dungeon here of uh, Starlight Gear somewhere in Southern California. Signing off. Talk to you soon. Later.